morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I want to thank Brother Williams for that introduction. I'm going to talk this morning about the, uh, the role of the deacon. But when Reverend Matthews was standing up there, I tapped on Brother Williams and I said, man, that guy's saying everything that I was going to say. <laughs> so I picked up my pen and I said, I'm going to have to redirect. And what I did, I had to change everything because the deacon I was sitting beside, I'm not going to call his name, uh, some of the things that Reverend Jackson was saying, almost made us curse. So I said, man, we in church, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. But, but uh, I am gonna talk about the role of a deacon. The role of a deacon. As soon as I can get my stuff. But again, he was hitting on exactly what I was gonna say. And I said, man, if I didn't know better, I'd say that guy had looked at some of my paperwork the role of a deacon. And in order to understand what the role of a deacon is, well, let me back up a little bit further. Uh, Brother Williams, if uh, you were instrumental in getting me here as a speaker, then uh, I want to thank you for that. I really do. I appreciate that. And anytime I can stand by men and talk, I really, I really enjoy it.
I'm not going to say anything you don't know because I'm sitting before some Bible scholars and I have to be very careful what I say. I have to be very careful what I say. So I'm going to go from Scripture on this. And if you disagree, you're not uh, disagreeing with me, you're disagreeing with Scripture. Now, this word deacon, the word is used widely throughout the New Testament to simply talk about someone being a servant. But then, there are very few texts that talks about a group of men performing a specific task and responsibilities in the church. We know that in the sixth chapter of Acts, we find seven men being selected to be deacons to take care of the needs of the widows in the early church. And then in 1 Timothy, third chapter, we find these words, deacons likewise are to be men worthy of respect, sincere, not indulging in much wine, and not pursuing dishonest gain. They must keep hold of the deep truth of faith with a clear conscience. They must first be tested, and then, if there is nothing against them, let them serve as deacons. In the same way their wives are to be women worthy of respect, not malicious talkers, but self-controlled and trustworthy in everything. We're still talking about what's in the Bible. A deacon must be the husband of one <coughs> wife and must manage his children and his household well. Those who have served well and gained an excellent standing and a great assurance in their faith in Jesus Christ. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much what the Bible say about the deacon. These two texts tell us all we know about deacons in the early church. As a result, churches have tend to not know quite what to do with us. Let me see the hands of all the deacons in here. Everybody in here serves as a deacon? Okay, pretty much, okay. Everybody in here serves as a deacon. Other churches have taken deaconship to the other side of the spectrum. They think if these men are going to have a position of responsibility in the church, we should give them some major authority. These are some churches. They want to tell the deacons what to do. And if you're like me, at my church where I serve, Evergreen, every Sunday somebody is trying to tell me what to do. And, and, and my thing to them when they tell me what to do, I say, you should be about doing it. You don't have to wait on a deacon to turn on the lights. There's the switch. If we walk in here and it's dark in here, why should we wait on the deacons that, that, uh, that, that are deacons here at morning start to come in and cut the light on? Turn the lights on. Thus, in some denominational church, that means creating a deacon board where the deacons perform the role of biblical elders, managing and overseeing the affairs of the church. There is absolutely no record in Scripture. Somebody correct me, but don't correct me now. There's absolutely no record in Scripture where deacons ever supposed to decide church policy. By definition, a deacon is a servant of a church. And serving don't mean the deacons make policies, but deacons should carry out the policy. Now follow me on that. Deacons right. should carry out the policy. So you might ask, why have deacons? Why have deacons? Well, I'm glad you asked. First thing is, we had deacons. We have deacons now because the early church had deacons. That's one reason. There may seem like it's overly simplistic answer when I say we had deacons because the early church had deacons, but you can rarely go wrong when you try to do things like the early churches did. So, if the early churches had deacons, then we want to have deacons as well. Second reason is, deacons are servants of the church. Yeah. Deacons are servants of the church. Whereas when Paul told uh, Timothy and Titus to appoint elders in the church, elders specifically are called to pastor. Elders are called to pastor, to lead and protect the congregation. Paul tells Timothy that elders are to manage and oversee the church. By contrast, when Paul talks about deacons, 
Listen to what Paul said when he talks about deacons. He tells Timothy that once they've been tested, deacons can then serve as deacons. That is found in the first chapter of Timothy, I mean, 1 Timothy 3 and 10. If you read it, it explains that, how deacons can serve as deacons. Paul is saying that these men were to serve as deacons. And in that, what we see here in the sixth chapter of Acts, the first deacons of the church, they were selected specifically to serve people in the church. That's it. Here's what they said. These seven men, they did not make any policies. They did not vote on anything. They stepped up and took responsibility, making sure the Greek widows had food. That's it. A good deacon, a good deacon is one who has a specific ministry that they focus on. Now, mind you, a ministry does not mean he's trying to preach. I'll get to that a little later. A good ministry. A good ministry. Your ministry could be visiting the nursing homes. That's a ministry. Looking after the church building, like I said, that is a ministry. Working with the youth, if your church has a youth or some kind of camp, that is a ministry. That makes a good deacon, working with a ministry. But no matter what, a good deacon looks for a ministry and serves the people in and of his church, a good deacon. And ideally, the men of a church selected as deacon should be people who already are involved in the ministry. What I'm saying is, when you're looking for a deacon, that person, you don't want to go get a person off the corner and bring them in. We've heard over and over, yeah, you catch a fish and kill them, but that is not how you should select a deacon. Paul said these men must first be tested. And I suspect that means given responsibilities to see if they, excuse me a second, they should be given responsibility to see what they can do with the responsibilities that are given to them. So first, I'm back to this, we have deacons because the early church had them. Second, those deacons are servants of the physical needs of the congregation, whereas the preachers and the elders focus on the spiritual needs of the church. Third, the position of the deacon appears to be part of a disciplining program. Follow me on this. The position of the deacon appears to be part of a disciplining program. There are some who view the deacon as being um, a stepping stone to becoming a preacher. Mm -hmm. How many times you've been told, yeah, all you do is a good prayer, and they say, man, you're going to be a preacher. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't think a good prayer going to qualify as a, as a preacher, but a lot of preachers, they started out as deacons. And there's nothing wrong with that, wanting to be a preacher. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think it's a little bit short-sighted. Notice in the sixth chapter of Acts that seven men were selected as deacons. Seven men. They were chosen because they were known to be full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. Again, that's Acts, sixth chapter, third verse. These men were not just what they call hanger-ons. Uh, they, they didn't appear to be the type that was just satisfied with being just part of a group. They stood out. They stood out. Out of a church of 5,000 people, these seven were the cream of the crop. These seven. Out of 5,000 people, these seven were the cream of the crop. And it appeared that they did their job so well that their ministry contributed to the fact that the word of God spread. Mm -hmm. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Back to Acts 6, 6 chapter, 7 verse. But of those seven men, there were two that even did more amazing things out of those seven. And that was Stephen and Philip. Yeah. These two dynamic men had powerful ministries. 
They were preaching, they were planting churches, and they were being missionaries. But both started out as deacons who fed the widows. So we may look at that task as being mediocre. And I say, nothing is mediocre if you're doing it for the people and you're getting satisfaction and the people are getting satisfaction. But being a deacon is what I call a proven ground for men to grow into other ministries. Sometimes that ministry might be a preacher. I don't inspire to be a preacher, and I don't know if any of you out there <laughs> inspire to be a preacher, but sometimes it's becoming a missionary, or sometimes it's just becoming a good deacon, a good deacon. But it's hard to tell how God is going to direct a man who starts out as a deacon, a servant of the church. Now you might be inclined to think that the role of a deacon is a lowly one. I mean, after all, all the important stuff appears to be done by the preachers and the elders. But that will be a grave miscalculation to think that our position as deacons are or is a lowly position. The role of a deacon, I say perhaps, is one of the most important tasks in the church. In fact, I don't even think you have to be an official deacon to have an important job in the church. Now, I have to talk about where I'm a deacon. I noticed that a person can join church on a Sunday, and they can be just about anything in that church within a few months. But that's any church. The church is the only place I know people can come and run things. Run things. And I'm not talking about deacons now. I'm just talking about people in general in the church. You simply have to be someone committed to being a servant. And you could be just about anything. Uh, I'm sure in your church you have Sunday school teachers that you've set up on them and you say, how did this person become a Sunday school teacher? Because I just said, in the church you can become just about anything you want to be. In, and I'm going to have to say, I'm, I've been black Baptist all my life, so in the black Baptist church. But the office of a deacon is a high and holy office. It's a very visible office. People watch us. People watch you. And the deacon can either build up or tear down the reputation of the church. Now, the deacon can. The preacher can really do that, but we're talking about deacons right now. But the, the, the reputation of the church can be either built up or torn down. We're in that particular uh, position as a deacon, and we're fooling ourselves, and we think that we can just elect anybody as a deacon. We're fooling ourselves if we think that the election is a minor matter for the church. We're fooling ourselves. It may be the most important thing a church can ever do outside of calling a new pastor. So, if we get it right, being the deacon, the church will be blessed in a mighty way. But if we get it wrong, we'll be paying for it for years to come. You get a person in a position and you'll never be able to move them and you know that person is ineffective and you'll never be able to move them. Before a deacon is selected, the church should go in the prayer, fall down before God and ask his faith in reference to this important matter. It shouldn't be a matter that we should take lightly. May your role as a deacon be one of the richest, most rewarding walks that you can have with the Lord. Thank you and God bless you. Amen. Yeah, but did y'all see that Marco Rubio move?